Hola Rafetu, hola Rafetu, hola Rafetu, welcome back, welcome to Zimbabwean Football Channel. Kaza Chiefs Football Channel Football from the fans' perspective, we're back again, man, we're back again. Today we're speaking Kiran Bakas, uh, Kaza Chiefs, we're speaking uh, the fans' match, the match that is organized by the National Football Supporters Association, NAFSA, the match that will happen on March. Uh, the 5th of March when Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates will be playing so well to Davis. So the March venue is, uh, I think, uh, the protest, in fact, is, is, is to the protesting at, at Orlando Stadium and so wait. And uh, the, the time is, is, is 11 a.m. Because I confirmed the date is the 5th of March during the daily day. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm in support of the people that are protesting, to be honest. And, and I hope... They make a, quite a statement because there's literally no reason why stadiums are not open. The whole COVID-19 thing does not... Um, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. The whole thing of vaccination, I don't buy it at all. We can see, man. We can see politicians are calling gatherings during the local government elections. All politicians called huge congested gatherings. And they didn't even confirm whether people are vaccinated. They didn't care. All they wanted was to address masses, was to campaign and get the votes. But when it's time for football fans to enjoy the beautiful game and to revive the sports in the country, to be part of the sport, to participate and to support their teams, now there are problems. They are told the decision lies with this. I heard Safa saying the decision lies with this. The other people said the decision lies with this. And, and the rest of things, man. And, and the whole thing does not make sense. So... Really, the government must take people serious. When they want their, vo their votes, they can call gatherings, congested stadiums, congested uh, uh, halls, community halls, open spaces where people are just, uh, you know, you know, congested. It's just there's no sp space to breathe. In the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, politicians can do that and address people. But when it's time for football fans to watch the game, there's problems around it and and i mean if you know if you know the football the football culture of this country it's not always you get fans full in the stadiums when only orlando pirates is playing mamelodi sundowns orlando pirates is playing kaiser chiefs kaiser chiefs is playing mamelodi sundowns or kaiser chiefs is playing in one in provinces outside Gauteng. that's when you're gonna get you know uh, stadiums packed but other than that during normal games days you don't find Fans congested in the stadium, so there's literally no reason. And stadiums are big; uh, they allow space for social distancing. I don't know why. I really don't know why. And in the Afcon, we saw in the Afcon, man, uh, uh, you know, football is played all over the world. Football is played, and fans are part of the, uh, part of the game. Part of the game. There's a there's an interesting one. In fact, there's an interesting article here written by by VG in. In the soccer lot, I think it's issue issue number one two six one. So here's here's the thing. Here's what is interesting. I want to read. It says the bottom line is, is on the same thing. On the same thing of of, uh, of football fans having to 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 access the stadium. It says football. The, the heading is that football fans taken for a ride. So the last paragraph says the bottom line is that if there is a way around COVID nineteen for cricket and rugby. Surely, there should be a way around it for football as well. We can't have football supporters left behind as if they don't matter. The Coronavirus Command Council should have made it a point that all sporting codes received the same treatment, terms and conditions from the word go instead of what seems to be putting priority to cricket and rugby. As things stand, one can't help but think that football supporters are being taken for a ride here. This, in return, has a knock-on effect on the beautiful game as more and more people are slowly losing interest in South African football. The fact that even television viewership is dwindling says a lot because people are fed up with watching practice games on their televisions. If there is a, if there is a Premier League game at the same time as the DSTV Premiership clash, it doesn't take rocket science to understand why a lot of people would rather tune in to the Premier League game. Can you blame those who have lost interest in local football? Can you blame football supporters 
for feeling left out and taken for a ride by their own people. Something has to give. We just can't carry on as if nothing is happening or nothing has happened while we watch other support, supporting coach enjoy having their supporters and media back at the stadium. So, yeah, man. The very same thing. Fans in South Africa, football, I mean, cricket fans and rugby fans and media personnel in, in, in cricket and rugby are, it's said that they are allowed to go to the stadiums to watch cricket, to support cricket and rugby. But it is not the same with the... Uh, Football. I, I I think I need not to say much, man. You know who supports cricket, you know who supports rugby, and you know who supports football. And 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 you know our government is scared of white people. I don't want not to mention this. It's scared of white people, it's scared of sporting codes that are white dominated. Because football is black dominated, you can take it for a ride. Because fans are black and mostly you can take us for a ride and, and it's just painful that we're still going through all this. And and yeah, I hope the guys you know the match succeeds. If possible, I would also attend the match. And if it was possible to also attend the match and go to, to the game, I would, I would attend the match. But yeah, I hope it succeeds. Let's get into the Kieran Bakas uh, story. So yeah, there's there's news that Kieran Bakas will live at the at the end of end of this season, July the first of July, you will leave Kaiser Chiefs. But also, there's a story written on it. I just want to read a little bit about it and have my own comment, and then I'll have questions or on, on, on to think about it. And it says, the report says, yeah, Bakas rejects payout, but said to leave Kaiser Chiefs. As re and then it says, as reported by the CIA crew earlier this month, Kaiser Chiefs midfielder Kieran Bakas is expected to leave the club after he was offered. An early termination deal in the new year, which he initially turned down. It's been clear for some time now that Bakas is not in Coach Stuart Baxter's plan, with his agent coming out in the public domain and stating that he did not believe the player would be offered a new contract at Naturena. CIA sources had indicated that the Soweto Giants had discussed an early settlement now believed to have been a three months payout for Bakas to exit, but the expiry of his deal, before the expiry of his deal uh, with the club on 8 June. So he rejected, apparently the news are that he rejected the, the settlement and he wanted to finish because in the middle of the season, he's not sure if he's going to get a team. And, uh, you know, you, it's, not, it's not safe to live in the middle of the season. But... Yeah, man, it remains Sia crew, you know, Sokala Duma stuff. Uh, it remains uh, rumors. But I think, yeah, there is truth in it that is going to live. But, I mean, there's there's just few things that I want us to discuss and I want to, to hear from you on them. He played for Kaiser Chiefs. I mean, 2019, arrived in 1920-20 season under uh, Ernest Medendorp. He played very well. To be honest, it was good performance in his first season. He enjoyed it. Just before COVID, he played very well and uh, was part involved in the game, involved in the playmaking game, involved in creating goals. And he scored a goal. I think he scored a goal against um, Cape Town City. I remember the goal he scored against Cape Town City. But he provided four assists, one goal 2019-2020. And then he had 17 appearances. Then 2020-2021 had 18 appearances, only created one goal. Uh, an assist, but he doesn't have goals in him. This year, this 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 season only played three games and only all came as a sub. So three, if not four, if not three, came as a sub. So it doesn't look like it's gonna is is is, is in coach's plans. Uh, it was not played enough by by Baxter. It's not played enough by Baxter. It was not paid, was not played enough by by Gavin Hunt. And he didn't enjoy, I mean, 16 games, 16, 17 games, yes, it's, 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 it's a lot, but that's, that's compared to how many games the club has played, it's low in terms of, you know, game, game uh, featuring. But it's loved by fans, loved by fans, loved by fans, and, and, and uh, even other pundits in, in, in the South African football always suggest the why is not played, always ask the questions why is not played. When there are midfielders in the in the team, when there's shortage shortage of midfielders, it doesn't seem to be the option. You know, coaches don't seem to trust him, and and 
that's where I am. That's where I am in terms of my argument is that coaches don't seem to trust him, to rely on him. He plays as a, as a deep, you know, creative midfielder. He plays as a central midfielder. He can play as an eight and he can play as, a, as an attacking midfielder. And, and, and still, still he's not trusted, to be honest. There are, seasons, there are games where coaches would rather play against instead of him. So those are questions that, why is it that it looks like coaches don't trust him? Why is it that coach, coaches don't trust him? And and also, I have personally, I have my own issues with him. First, I think physically, is always so. I always seen have seen him as a guy who's not reliable physically, or as far as his fitness is concerned. Uh, physically, also in terms of protecting the ball, he loses the ball. He gets you know shaken off the ball easily. Uh, in terms of fitness, he doesn't finish a game. Bakas doesn't fin either comes as a sub. Oh, he doesn't finish a game. Can't, I've never seen him playing 90 minutes. Hardly plays 90 minutes. And he plays short passes. He's not a guy who can pick, you know, a 30 meters pass, 40 meters pass. I mean, direct forward pass. He doesn't look like that. He plays sideways, plays short balls, and sometimes plays risky. I've watched him in games where he plays, you know, a back, back pass and, and it's not full and is, is intercepted and the team is, in you know, not in good uh, situation. So... He has, he has player that has has his own flaws, but all around is is, is good you know, to watch. But uh, personally, I don't trust him. The same as coaches don't trust him, I don't trust him. So what I want to ask from you guys is that, should he leave? By the way, in fact, I think he's leaving. Do you think he stayed? Because the Chiefs is a, a, fa a success. Is it a failure? Is it just average? Or he was just not given enough chance? Uh, I wanted to include the issues of COVID-19 that they might have disturbed him, you know, coming from outside another country from Australia, coming into a new country. COVID-19 disturbed a lot of players and especially new arriving players. But uh, I think I think it just didn't click for Kaiser Chiefs. I think it didn't, just didn't click for Kaiser Chiefs. But a lot of you fans like him, seem to support him, seem to love him. I'd like to hear your ratings on him. Whether it's a success, is a failure, average performance, or he was just not given given a chance. Um, and then, and then yeah, man, yeah, that's that's, that's more like it. Otherwise, the one football channel, Kaiser Chiefs football channel, football from the fans' perspective. Let me hear from you. It is love and it is peace.